Coach Marinelli, uh, first off, we haven't done the tour yet, but this is probably the most beautiful wrestling room I've, I've ever seen for a high school. You know, I'll just pan to it real quick, just to... Six wrestling mats, we'll get a good tour of that later. But when we talk, um, I think you're in a great area right now and you're in a good position in uh, central Ohio, but how far are we from the Ohio State University right now? Mm, 10, 12 miles, approximately, maybe less, right down 315. So this is, you have a lot of like probably professors, I'm guessing, and a lot of administration. And, and to speak to it specifically, you, you have coaches that live in your district, your school district. And uh, mainly when I think about it, um, Tom Ryan, mm -hmm. and then uh, also uh, Coach Lou Roselli. And their sons wrestled for you and, and are, are still wrestling for you, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Jake graduated instead of high state, but Jordan's here. So you, so you still got one left, correct? Yeah, well, there's, and there's another little couple of Shelly brothers coming up the pipe. Looking at that, you know, that, that when I talk, you know, like, obviously there's uh, kids who got to coach Tom Brand's son at Iowa City, you know, like, but there's got to be some pressure there. And, I, and I, I feel this, like, I would feel pressure, you know, having this expert over me. But, you know, I, I think it helps you're a two-time All-American in college and, and you wrestled here at Ohio State, but... Is there pressure with the Roselli boys? Is there pressure with Jake Ryan? Was there pressure coaching guys like that? I mean, I guess there was expectations, and there can be pressure if you don't communicate and you're not on a, a good page uh, with, with those coaches. But those guys, are they know what they're doing. So for me to, to not tap into them for some of their knowledge would kind of be dumb on my part. And for me not to, uh, you know, seek out, you know, Tom Ryan or Lou Roselli and talk to them about what's best for their kids, then, then I'd be kind of dumb. But I also do that with a lot of other parents as well. So it's, you know, I try to treat them in a fair manner. You know, whenever you got something where it's like it, it arises, like cut weight, should have done this or should have done that in a match. Is there something, do you ever feel like these guys breathing down your neck at all? Because I, I don't think they're those type of guys, but... Do you feel that ever? Is that ever a thing where it's like, oh man, you know, Jake Ryan loses in the, the state finals. Is there anything where it's like, we should have done, should have zigged when I should have zagged. You know, is there, is there any second guessing by those guys? Um, if there is, I don't hear it. But, you know, I'm sure every, every coach or anyone who's done something and you see somebody else doing it, you always have your foot, your fingerprint of how you want to do it. So naturally, sometimes we think my way is the only way. And... Sometimes we can get different results doing different things. But I haven't, Tom Ryan or Lou Roselli have never said anything to me in a negative manner about how their kid has been trained or whatever. I watch my kid play football. I coach football for a long time and I'm sitting out there. Maybe I would do it this way, maybe I'd do it that way. But that guy's the coach. He's the authority of my son. So I just let him do what he do, does. And for the most part, that's how Tom and Lou are. Having hands off guys like that who are resources. How big is that? Like you're saying, you got other parents who are resources, but I mean, we're talking about an Olympic coach. We're talking about the yeah. head coach of the you know yeah. 2015 national champs. Yeah. We're talking about some serious resources. Do you tap the resources? Yes, yes, I do. I'm always bouncing stuff off of those guys and uh, trying to get them to come in and do things, and you know, just getting around them is enough. Going down to the RTC and then being involved with the stuff they're doing, going to the home matches and all that. I learn a lot, and our kids learn a lot and get better from being, being around that atmosphere. You know, like, as I stated, you're a Buckeye. You went to Columbus to sales. I mean, you're a guy who's literally never left the 270 loop. Well, <laughs> maybe we're a little outside of the 270 loop now, but you've, you've never left Columbus as far as career-wise, in the sport of wrestling, teaching, coaching. You have been a, a Columbus guy through and through. Um, what's that like, being able to you know, have another opportunity? You go from Columbus to sales where you were there for... 10 plus years, right? And, yeah. And then you, you go from DeSales, where you guys are runner-up, always, you know, back and forth with the St. Paris Grams and the Walshes, and, and now you're here at Liberty and you're building the thing here. Uh, what's it been like to, to be able to do everything you wanted to in, in Columbus, Ohio? Well, bo both of these schools were similar, and they're both great schools. I've been fortunate to be at a great school when I went to DeSales, and then being able to go to a great institution like Ohio State, and then being able to teach at a great place at DeSales and then also being able to come here at a great place. Um, you know, I'm really grateful and fortunate to, to, to be at these places. And it's good when you got people around you that want to win. You know, they want to win here and whatever, whatever it is. 
You want to have the best de department, the best teachers, the best coaches, and uh, they're driven to be competitive here, just like the sales was. So it's a it's a great place, and like I've been fortunate. If if I wasn't at a if I didn't feel I was at a place where I could do good things, then I probably wouldn't been at more places. Maybe being a Buckeye, being close to Ohio State. I don't ever notice from you like this huge Ohio State bias. Like everybody else in the state of Ohio is just so all over Ohio State. You're not like that. And it almost feels like you're put, placing aside your, your bias and your love and your passion for Ohio State. For You want kids to be able to experience everything. You guys have this combine coming up. You know, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But well, how do you place the Ohio State bias aside and, and be able to send kids? You got a guy who won state for you last year. Who's that Cornell? How do you place the bias aside? Well, I guess I'm, I'm looking at a growth factor. How can you how can you grow? And um, it's great to see Ohio State win that national title. But that was a long process of them of them growing. But I appreciate what Coach Ryan and Coach Rochelle has done. But I I also appreciate appreciate watching wrestling. Uh, Seb, I love the things that you guys do with Flow all the time. And I mean, I'm a wrestling junkie, so I love watching the worlds. I love watching those, everything that I can. And I appreciate guys like. Kale Sanderson and John Smith and Zeke Jones and I like trying to see how different guys do it so although I'm a great Ohio State fan and I and I, uh, I love Ohio State it still doesn't mean I can't appreciate how this guy wrestles or I'm a, I'm a great American but I still I still love how the Russians wrestle and I still love how the Iranians wrestle and I really appreciate that so you know I want us to win all the time and I want OSU to win all the time but I, I recognize and appreciate greatness when you when you see it Speaking of Russians, mm -hmm. Moran, Moran Karchalava's mm -hmm. son will be wrestling for you. Mm -hmm. Is that something, you know, we, we've talked, Roselli, we've talked, Ryan. Mm -hmm. we, is that something where you try and pick Moran's brain a little oh, bit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be a fool not to take advantage of some of those things that, that he does real well. There's some things in his style that I really like and they do real well. So I, I try to, you know, incorporate some of that stuff in what we do. Now, not, 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 not everyone's going to be able to wrestle how. Coach Ryan wrestles or how Coach Branch wrestles or how I wrestle for that matter. But, you know, you see a certain skill set in a wrestler and you think, well, this might be a good move or a good skill set for that wrestler to learn. And if Moran is one who does that skill set better, then that's where I'm going to go to, to try to figure that out and try to learn it for our guys. Any pressure there? You know, the guy's a Soviet national champ, a Russian national champ. Do you feel any pressure there? It doesn't feel like you feel any pressure with uh, Roselli. No. Or Ryan, is there any pressure with Moran? No, there's no, there's no pressure there. I just, I don't know. We've had some good teams and some, and some bad, not bad teams. We had some good teams and some teams that didn't do as well as they could have. Uh, the kids tried as hard as they could, just maybe just didn't have the talent and combination. But through that whole time, when it boils down to it, I'm, I'm still going to get up in the morning and eat breakfast, right? I'm still going to, you know, eat my lunch and eat my dinner, and, and I'm going to do the best I can for those guys. Is, sons as much as I would for everybody else's and and try to do what I can and be fair and uh, and I don't I don't feel that much pressure and I want to win but I don't want to do it I don't want to change things to have to win if that makes sense to you you know makes sense to me yeah